my friends let us have a look on one more important uh, hemolytic anemia that is uh, sickle cell anemia we will see the most important thing what i will deal is the mainly the pathophysiology pathogenesis of the sickle cell anemia to lesser extent on the clinical features and not more in detail about the treatment aspect as such more important is the peripheral smear finding how to diagnose the sickle cell anemias so remember it is one of the important uh, hemoglobinopathies so it is a group of hereditary disorders where there is structurally abnormal hemoglobin will be there more than around uh, 300 variants have been described and one of one third of them may remain as clinically uh, significant so they are the one which will bring the patient to the clinic and sometimes uh, if you don't guess there is a chance that you can miss these lesions so what is this sickle cell anemia it is mainly due to the point mutation in a gene encoding the beta globin chain so what will happen is at a sixth position of the beta globin chain of the hemoglobin there is replacement of single amino acid so it is a point mutation that single amino acid replacement is enough to cause the disease so there is a replacement of the glutamic acid is replaced by valine at the sixth position of the beta globin chain of the hemoglobin molecule around uh, 8 to 10 percent of these cases occurs in the general population in the african american so it's very common in african americans so as such we have seen very rarely the sickle cell anemia it is very very common in african subset so around 30 percent in the african population uh, that indicates that there is a very high incidence of sickle cell anemia in african subset so it's one of the most common uh, familial uh, hemolytic anemia especially in african population very peculiarly it uh, is known to protect against the plasmodium falciparum malariae so why it happens is mainly because the sickled rbcs they are uh, almost deoxygenated there will be no any oxygen in that mole molecule in that rbcs so in such a sickled rbcs the malaria parasite cannot uh, survive as such so that's how it gives indirectly a protection against the plasmodium falciparum malaria and it is mainly transmitted in the autosomal recessive pattern so to diagrammatically represent this how the normal rbcs will appear by concave shape the rbcs how the sickled rbcs irreversibly sickled rbcs appear like this so this is so called as holy leaf appearance of the rbcs or a sickle rbc so what happens with that particular point mutation there is deoxygenation which leads to formation of a hemoglobin yes we call it as hemoglobin s such a hemoglobin is very much prone for polymerization so it undergoes variety of biochemical changes it undergoes chelation crystallization of the hemoglobin s will takes place so as the deoxygenation continues more and more aggregates of hemoglobin s molecules will assemble within the rbc as long needle shaped fibers and it produces a distorted sickle or a holy leaf shape of the rbcs so this how the shape of the rbc will turn into so this is how the rbc the peripheral smear finding will be there in the sickle cell anemia you compare the normal rbc again here so sickled rbcs will have this uh, peculiar appearance by seeing the ps itself you can easily diagnose a sickle cell anemia you have to look for these sickled rbcs so along with that as a compensatory mechanism for the uh, anemia the body will synthesize more and more polychromatophilic rbcs there can be one stress erythropoiesis hurried erythropoiesis by sending more and more nucleated rbc to the peripheral blood patient can also have a thrombocytopenia so this is how the classical appearance of the sickle cell anemia will appear so what are the factors that influences the sickling as such so remember hemoglobin f that is fetal hemoglobin is the one which is said to protect against the sickling and it is all the concentration of hemoglobin s more and more the concentration of hemoglobin more will be the severe rate of the disease and length of time with a low oxygen supply that is more the deoxygenation more will be the sickling more will be the complications so let us have a look at the pathophysiology of this uh, sickle cell anemia with this beautiful animation here so what is actually happening with the rbcs is the point mutation 
So glutamic, glutamic acid at the beta globin chain at 6 position is replaced by valine. So with this particular thing the hemoglobin A will be converted into hemoglobin S. This hemoglobin S is known for polymerization, aggregation and it undergoes crystallization. So such a sickled RBCs, you know what will happen? They will not able to again pass through the sinusoidal spaces within the spleen. Again normal RBCs are able to pass through out. So this is how the normal RBCs will pass through out from the sinusoidal spaces. But sickled RBCs are not able to pass through the splenic sinusoidal spaces. So they will come more and more in contact with the, the macrophages within the splenic sinusoidal spaces. And not only that, somehow surprisingly, these sickled RBCs are known to express more and more surface adhesion molecules. So they will adhere to the endothelial cells as well as even to the sinusoidal macrophages. That's how they get sequestered. They undergo hemolysis. They will undergo removed from the as such from the body from the splenic macrophages are the one who will do this particular work. So initially there will be a splenomegaly workload hypertrophy, but as the time advances this particular cycling will continues and there will be more and more congestion of splenic sinusoidal spaces will take place. Later on these uh, sickled RBCs can totally block the blood supply to the organs, various organs. So spleen can undergo even infarction. So as splenic infarction continues, the spleen can undergo a condition so called as atosplenectomy. So initially there will be a splenomegaly in the sickle cell anemias but as the disease advances, the spleen will undergo atosplenectomy because of the infarction of the organ. So not only the spleen, this particular entity will occur in various organs. So patient will experience hemolysis, hemolytic anemia changes will be there, microvascular occlusion of the variety of organs will be there and tissue damage is because of the infarction. So this is how the sickle cell RBCs get stagnated. So what will happen? More and more calcium influx within the RBC will take place and there will be the efflux of the water molecules and potassium molecules. So this results in the excessive membrane damage. So RBC membrane undergoes more and more damage as the deoxygenation continues. Continues the RBCs will undergo irreversible cycling. So once the RBC undergo this particular irreversible cycling, they never come back to normal shape of the RBC. Even you supply the oxygen, they will not come back to normal shape. So such RBCs will have very reduced lifespan, say just around 10 days or 20 days. So more and more hemolysis will take place. So as the deoxygenation continues, so they keep on occluding the vessels of the various organs. So various organs will undergo infarctive changes. So this is the pathophysiology, pathogenesis of the sickle cell anemia. So remember, it is a vicious cycle of cycling, more and more cycling, more will be the occlusion of the variety of vessels, more will be the hypoxia, more will be the cycling. So this is a vicious cycle of uh, cycling and hypoxia and obstruction resulting in the ischemia continues. Yes, what are the consequences of this particular cycling as such? There can be chronic extravascular hemolytic anemia, RBC lifespan as I told it is reduced as short as 20 days. So chromium 51 leveling can be done to know the lifespan of the RBCs that will show that RBCs are having reduced lifespan. Vesoacclusive crisis can be triggered by patient if he or she suffers from infections or inflammation, dehydration, acidosis, all these factors will trigger vesoclegive crisis and patient will have a variety of crisis so called as painful crisis or a pain crisis patient can have acute chest syndrome it is it is all because of the occlusion of the pulmonary vessels patients can have a stroke because these sickle diabetes can even block the coronary vessels patient can have a priapism that is painful erection of the penis mainly even because of the dorsal vein or dorsal artery of the uh, penis if it is get obstructed hand foot syndrome because of the dactylitis very painful uh, fingers and toes we call it as hand foot syndrome so these are all indicates it's a lot of uh, painful crisis patient can undergo sometimes patient can even undergo a plastic crisis where parvovirus b19 infection is known to kill and attack the the erythroid precursors, so patient can even have a, a plastic anemia crisis. So these are the variety of crises what are seen in the patient with the sickle cell anemia. 
so what are the clinical features as a triad you know there will be hemolysis there will be hemolytic anemia in the hemolytic anemia there will be anemia there will be jaundice there will be splenomegaly but remember only in sickle cell anemia splenomegaly is initially seen but most of the time it is the autosplenectomy there will not be any enlarged spleen so patient can have a icterus gallstones especially the pigmented gallstones are again commonly seen in both uh, sickle cell anemia as well as the hereditary spirocytosis or even any other hemolytic anemias hemosiderosis because of the excessive accumulation of the iron in the variety of organs like liver pancreas and even heart patient can have a hemosiderosis so infarction and uh, ischemia of various tissues and organs can occur as a compensatory mechanism bone marrow will expand right because of the anemia bone marrow will respond for the anemia so because of expansion of the bone marrow patient will have a peculiar uh, hemolytic phases that is there will be a frontal bossing the frontal bossing will be there if you take a x-ray we call it as crew-cut appearance of the bone marrow that is expansion of the bone marrow uh, the diameter as such so it is a kind of peculiar space saddle nose like deformity can occur so these are all uh, and molar malar prominence can occur so by seeing the face itself you can make out yes it could be a case of hemolytic faces so something like mongoloid appearance will come to the face and it all indicates that it is uh, sometimes extra medullary hematopoiesis that is hematopoiesis can occur in the liver in the variety of lymphoid organs like spleen and even in the lymph node so they can be extra medullary apart from the bone marrow the hematopoiesis can take place in the other organs as well so remember autosplenectomy occurs in case of sickle cell anemia so how to diagnose the sickle cell anemia so most important again you have to do the complete peripheral smear examination you have to look for the sickling sickle rbc's and artificially you can induce the sickling of the rbc's by one of the test of uh, most important that is sodium metabisulfite test so this sodium metabisulfite is said to be oxygen consuming agent so when you treat uh, the rbc's with the sodium metabisulfite more and more sickling occurs if the case is that of a sickle cell anemia but the most important diagnostic test is again you have to demonstrate the uh, hemoglobin s by doing the hemoglobin electrophoresis that is the test of the confirmation of the sickle cell anemias so prenatal diagnosis is again possible by doing the dna in a fetal cells and sickle cell anemia is known for variety of complications so treatment is the gene therapy which is again the true uh, it is not it has come into reality so sickle cell anemias nowadays they are just treated by two drugs called as hydroxyurea that is said to reduce the sickling it uh, increases the hemoglobin f levels hemoglobin f levels are the one which will reduces the polymerization of the uh, hemoglobin s so that is hydroxyurea nowadays the drug of choice for the uh, hemolytic uh, anemias especially sickle cell anemias and even nitric oxide they will give which is a vasodilator that relieves the infarction as such so hydroxyurea and uh, nitric oxide is the one which are nowadays used as a medical enough treatment for the sickle cell anemia cases thank you